calling this uh, a letter, uh, another letter from Jack. I had one on there. Uh, but first of all, I want to show, they used a diagnosis, uh, <laughs> one that was totally false throughout the years, and I laughed, but it's not because it's funny. Uh, I laughed to get me through it. Uh, but this was taken um, by my eye doctor, but uh, I just want to show it here. I don't know if I can get it on here. This has been used against me and could kill me, and if there ever was, like with Anastasia, it could be covered up. Uh, it's been such a, uh, how much money, and it ends up being my money. I'm a hostage was uh, used to torture me. You know, I wonder, uh, when they tried to kill me back in um, 80, well, more than that, but I'm just going for that right at the moment, 80, after I'd done the book on mind control, I got the letter from the FBI and all that on June the 23rd of 79, 80, I, uh, April Fool Day of 80, I was still full of antifreeze. And the fiasco, I mean, it, it was unreal. I went for a talk screen to try to neutralize whatever was given me, and instead I got, um, <laughs> they were trying to kill me, man, from one to the other, across the state line to one, and then working, f and when I say one, you know what I'm talking about, because this is what they tried to do, is make me look anything but sane, a total lie. I am Margaret Ann Windsor, and uh, I've lived in a tent on the National Forest because everybody stood by and was afraid to get involved or really didn't care. Um, I was kidnapped in 41 and brought here and given the name of a twin, and Elizabeth is illegal, and her father helped kidnap me, George the Sixth, who was illegal. Here he is the year I was born with Roosevelt planning my kidnapping with Joe Kennedy, ambassador, and his two sons, by the way, were there uh, throughout this time that I was kidnapped, John and Joe. Here's my father, the real King Edward VIII. My father, he was married to my mom, Claudia O'Keefe, not to uh, Wallace Simpson, who a double was used to marry her and help take down my father. Now that I wanted to... Uh, well, I'm making a mess out of this. I wrote about mind control, but these happened later. I'm just showing this again to refresh. This was uh, the Fort Hood shooter, the psychiatrist, who, by the way, uh, finished at um, Virginia Tech, which is about 45 miles from me. I'm in Roanoke. And he was born in Venton, uh, Roanoke, Venton. They're in the county here. Uh, so he's really a native of here and finished got psychiatry somewhere else, a uh, degree. Um, this just tells me, uh, tells about me uh, being a candidate and flown to Larry Flint's and doing the book and saying I'm Margaret Ann Windsor, uh, I'm heir to the crown, and I am. Uh, Victoria the second. This reason I was kidnapped by the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, member of my own family, Kennedys, did I say, Roosevelt, uh, and she's living good while I've lived in a total of hell. Um, when I say this is used against me, it would be shocking to see what they have done with it, okay? And everybody getting in on it, really. Uh, now then, I've told about the mind control, and and um, I wanted to read, because in uh, after 80, when I was across the state line and had the, uh, well, I'm showing my small apartment here, aren't I? Uh, Jack was the one that saved my life, and I have to remember... <laughs> Uh, one, well, the last time I saw Jack, 
he had a little sign by the coffee because I'd gone through um, oh, near where my Aunt Georgia lived, and I was just finding out my real name then. Uh, she lived uh, over the mountain there from Santa Fe at Abiquiu, I guess is how you pronounce it, Ghost Ranch. And I was just finding out at the time about my real name. Jack was living in Santa Fe, and he had saved my life back in 1980, so I don't want to repay him by getting him in trouble telling the truth because he told the truth. But anyway, uh, I just remember going through there, and I was kept penniless. I was driving a Hustler car, and this one had been March of 1984, and I hadn't seen Larry Flynn again. I'm going through there, through... um, Santa Fe, and I didn't even know Jack's address, so I had to track him down. I <laughs> called the police department because it was on the weekend. So Jack came out, and I was so glad to see him. He came out, and he took me to his apartment, and he was such a gentleman. I have to say, uh, you know, to me, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met, and I hope I'm not repaying him by getting him in trouble with uh, the, this letter. Um, remember, he said... <laughs> He, I love coffee, by the way, and he set a, a little sign by the side of it, changing attitudes. I hope I've uh, written him and talked to him over the years since then, just like I saw him yesterday, it would seem. But it's been that long. I wouldn't know him if he showed up at the door. Uh, so I hope he doesn't get mad at me here and have a change of attitude. But uh, I put the other one on. Um, the other day, and here, he's, the people that kidnapped me were the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, and I've said that, um, and my own uncle helped, the Roosevelts, um, Freemasons. He's talking about the, I'm everywhere with this, I guess, but uh, this camera here, uh, I did want to put this in, too, about um Timothy McVeigh said, well, his goes into the patterns, but uh, he said that the Army put a chip up him, and so he died because of the Oklahoma City bombing. And here is a picture of William, his illegal prince, and who he named his son, um, George, after his great-grandfather that helped kidnap me, who's the illegal monarch. But anyway, they say here that, um, as a member, uh, Buckingham Palace spokesman said that William, Air, well, he's not heir, not legitimate anyway, had a microchip implanted somewhere in his anatomy to discourage would-be kidnappers. Uh, you talk about the irony, his grandmother, Elizabeth, his great-grandfather that he named his son after were the ones that stole the crown, lied about my dad, kept taking him down, King Edward VIII, kidnapped me, the real monarch, who was his niece, and they're worried about his being kidnapped? I mean, come on. Uh, okay, the the Freemasons were the ones that, I mean, that's what they were called in the New World Order now. And I don't know how much of this that I really, there's some that, uh, I don't know. He's telling about back in Huntsville is where he saved my life then, really, uh, in November of 81. He and Susan, he brought Susan Bodo. I don't know if he wants me to tell this or not. He's talking about uh, the mayor. Maybe I shouldn't. And the mayor, Joe Davis, if I remember, was friends with Lana Dempsey, the woman that uh, they put me there and gave me the name of a twin when they kidnapped me. And I grew up thinking she was my mother. And when, I mean, she's a horrible creature. She was trying to get Jack because he was trying to help me. She was trying to kill me to shut up the book because she was afraid it would. Uh, people would find out my real name and about the twins and the fact she killed them. So if you think this is a joke, it's not. I'm going to read. Uh, but Joe Davis was the mayor during 80 when I was there with the Antifreeze and men worked for the district attorney there, uh, Huntsville, Alabama. 
Madison County DA um, Fred Simpson. Um, but anyway, huh. I don't know. They don't want to say that about. He says he always trusted Joe. He always trusted me. Odd that when I was researching a biographical data sheet on Joe much, much later, there was one very simple notation, Freemason. I want to go back up here to uh, Sal Bazzini. Now, I've told this myself. You you do know Jack. Oh, this is from, my God. <laughs> no, this is to me. This is his, you do know, Jack, that Sal Bazzini was, oh, this is what the mayor saying to him. Um, do you know, Jack, that Sal Bazzini, the police chief, was maybe the best thing that ever happened to Huntsville? So this is Joe Davis, the mayor, who's a Freemason, it turns out. during the, he, he was their mayor when I was being killed there. You see how I laughed to get through it? There's nothing funny. It was hell on wheels. But I have to say this about Salvador Bazzini. He was the police chief, and he was brought in there in 80 when they were trying to kill me. Uh, after I had the antifreeze put in me, okay, uh, he and Jack were really the ones that helped me through all that till I got out of there, and it hasn't stopped, really. But uh, Sal Bazzini was an ex-FBI, and he was sent in as police chief of Huntsville. And I remember he and Lina Dempsey going to battle. The reason Lina Dempsey had anything on her side was that I was kidnapped, and the Kennedys and the people that kidnapped me and put me there, and Senator John Sparkman was a U.S. senator who was, he knew all about my kidnapping, and Huntsville was NASA and all the trade and treaties that came in there. And by the way, I, Lina Dempsey was with him when he died in Huntsville a few years later. Um, so that's the cover-up is, you know. <laughs> anyway, I don't guess you do know, but um, so anyway, Sal Vizzini, there was a book even I got. It was a thin one, not thick, back in '80, and I've forgotten the title of it about Sal being a FBI. That he, if he told the things he knew, he would be killed. So here is the one thing I wanted to say, Susan, and maybe I shouldn't give her name, and I won't. Um, Susan had been, uh, what else? Susan Boda. Uh, she had been a uh, professor at the University of Alabama, I believe, in sociology. When I met her, Jack introduced her to me in '80. And she was, um, Susan was the one that had the ring that was supposed to be from another planet. Remember, this is NASA there. And uh, what was his name now? I've lost it. <laughs> See how I have this put together. I'm not feeling too great on top of everything else. Oh, what was his name? Oh, come on. She's supposed to testify against him. Oh, da 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 da, da. Well, I, I, I'm messing up. <laughs> Nobody will watch this one. Um, I can't remember who it was. Jack's got it in here. But anyway, Susan had the ring, and she was supposed to testify, and it was uh, Peter Abbott against Peter Abbott. And he was under witness protection, I think, in Huntsville. But anyway, that was Susan had a lot going there, too. Uh, for her, and I had liked Susan, but anyway, this is back to Susan went out to California, too, near where Jack is. And what I was going to make here, when I talk about mind control murders and patterns, the Amy Bishop was a professor back in the late, I believe, 10 or early 11, first month of 11. Amy Bishop was uh, a professor where Susan was at the University of Alabama, and she suddenly shot three other professors dead. They locked her up, and I talked with, so this had to have been earlier in 10, uh, maybe in October or something of 10, that that happened, the murders, and I remember calling the 
attorney that was going to represent her, Miller, and he reminded me that he had worked for the uh, DA's office when I was there for a short time and had met me. And, uh, you know, I thought he was going to talk to me, but then I got a phone call back 10 minutes later, and, like, somebody had called him or something. And uh, anyway, later she was... um, well, they said she was insane, which, of course, she isn't. She was under mind control. But here's talking about Susan. She moved out to, I guess, Sacramento or near Jack. And I'm sorry if I've got this all over the place here. Here I am, if you can see me. <laughs> um, and I'm acting like I'm feeling good when I don't, but that's the way I get through it. Uh, but anyway, um, Jack had to, uh, not Jack. Uh, Susan had two sons when I remember her in 80, and they were both younger. And so I don't know that, uh, well, well, he's dead, and that's sad, so I guess I can give his name. I just don't want to get Jack because he's written something that's truthful, and uh, it really happened. It must have been covered. But uh, I'll just read what Jack says. Peter, you recall, was a federal protective witness in Huntsville who was, ousted by Susan Boda, Jack, I hope you don't hate me, a.k.a. Thompson and Glenn Brooks. Susan now resides in the, well, she's not anymore, she's out, but here he says her son, John Thompson, now she married again, so I would think this is a stepson. Um, but he was shot and killed, just uh, what Jack says here, a few blocks from where he didn't live out there. Uh, and he he was the, her son, John Thompson, was the Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy. Murdered a number of years ago, not a mile from where I currently live and anyway he was told to keep to not mention certain names or anything or just not get into it you know have any say or whatever not that he knew anything but uh in other words it was shut up I guess is what he meant here uh if not that's my interpretation don't get mad at Jack um well, where was I going from there? I've messed that up, I guess. I'm hurting like heck. Uh, one of the things I did want to finish off with, I'm sure everybody's going to listen. watch this one. I'm making, if you're hurting like I am right at the moment. <laughs> um, oh, what's he saying back here? Oh, uh, well, maybe not. Yeah, he is too, but there's no need. He just says down here about Larry Flynn. I guess he's still trucking along. Um, guess he hasn't seen him then in a while. And I don't know what I had on this page. Nothing, I guess. Um, well, I guess bear with me here. I think that's all I was going to say on that, and hope I make some sense in it, and I've left out a lot of it. I got quite a few from Jack over the years, and um, anyway, I'm going to go. It's too much, and it's not going. <laughs>